Hey, Broken Sales people, welcome to the workshop. Today we are talking about scripts and comedians on this episode of the Broken Sales People podcast. Hey, Broken Sales people, uh, welcome to the workshop. My name is Red Stastrom, and we are here to help you fix your broken sales skills. So I want to talk about something that I've seen over and over in a lot of different industries selling a lot of different products. And most of them don't work very well. And I want to explain why they don't work well for everybody the way that you expect them to. That's scripts. So let's start with explaining something very basic. Stand-up comedy. I'm a big stand-up comedy fan. Bill Burr can't tell Chris Rock's jokes. Jerry Seinfeld can't do Patton Oswalt's material. Joe Rogan, well, Joe Rogan probably could do Andrew Dice Clay, but there's a certain amount where you need to have the right person telling the right joke. It has to match their personality. It has to match their delivery. It has to, that person, that comedian has to embody that joke. Um, you see this a lot with Brian Reagan. He is excellent at using physical comedy. Jim Gaffigan is excellent at self-deprecating humor. Same thing with Rodney Dangerfield. All of these jokes, all of these comedians are phenomenal, but you can't see them doing each other's material very well, and at least not being able to carry it off the same way. So I talked about before why most great salespeople make lousy managers. And the reason is because in order to be a great salesperson, you need a certain kind of personality. In order to be a great manager, or a great coach, you need the polar opposite personality. It's also why so many great players wind up being bad coaches. Isaiah Thomas, Wayne Gretzky, Ted Williams, Mike Singletary. Um, you can look at Michael Jordan in the front office down in Charlotte. There's a lot of different uh, players who were great on the court, on the field, but didn't transition well to the sideline or the office. The reason is in order to be a great player, you need to be very, very impatient. You need to have that go, go, go personality. In order to be a great manager, however, you need to be patient. You need to take your time. You need to come to the right decision. You need to coach people on the one thing they need to work on rather than just give them all of these problems all at once that they need to work on all at the same time. So now think back to the comedians that I just talked about. Don't you think a salesperson and a sales manager are going to deliver that same joke two different ways? That sales manager may have a great sense of humor and may be able to give that joke, but that doesn't mean the salesperson who has the polar opposite personality is going to be able to deliver it with the same mannerisms, the same nuance, the same delivery that the sales manager is. See, I'm a great example of this. I am somebody who understands my wheelhouse. I know I can do the self-deprecating sense of humor. I am not good at the cocky side of things. I'm not good at pretending that I'm cocky and walking around like the analogy I'm thinking of is Dr. Cox from Scrubs. I don't have that part of me. I have that, again, self-deprecating sense of humor. So when I do have to go cocky, I wind up going sarcastic. Doesn't read the right way to everybody else. Um, the only way for me to do cocky is for me to say it with this Ron Burgundy voice that's over the top. Um, British people who are listening to this probably hate that because sarcasm should be said in a flat tone of voice in England. But here in the U.S., I know in order for me to deliver certain kinds of jokes, I need to change my inflection, change my personality, albeit temporarily, in order to deliver that one line. So now let's think to the scripts. Who wrote the scripts? Was that sales manager, right? Was that guy who spent down, sat down and poured over every word? Now, while you are a jeans and a t-shirt kind of person, your manager is in a khaki and some po in a polo. 
right? He's golfing on the weekends and you're working on your truck. Same thing here. So you have to understand that that delivery is going to be very different than yours. If you're Rodney Dangerfield and Caddyshack, you don't pretend to be Ted Knight. You don't read Ted Knight's script. You read Rodney Dangerfield's script. Staying in your lane helps you with that. So you need to know that that's one of the major reasons that scripts fail. The other major reason scripts fail is because they're scripts. Because I know my script, but my customer doesn't. See, I know the next five lines. I'm able to play that game of chess. I know where I'm going to lead that customer but the customer doesn't. And so the customer drags me off track. Now I fumble, now I'm confused, now I'm in too many different directions. And my goal is to bring them back to the script rather than listen. There's the problem is once you have the script, you have that line. You wanna stay in that direction the whole time. It doesn't work. What you need to do is take the time, listen to your customer, let the conversation go where the conversation goes. Yes, you may have to nudge it in one direction or another. Absolutely, that's part of your job as a salesperson is to understand and control that conversation, but you need to let it happen organically. You can't force it into them admitting that, hey, the world is flat and now I have to buy your product. It doesn't work that way. If they don't believe what you believe, they will not buy your product. You need to find that common ground, talk to them. And assuming that they have the same common ground as everybody else in the world is going to set yourself up for failure. Rather than write scripts, agonize every over every single choice of words, walk in with a handful of questions that you can ask. That's it. Not yes or no questions, not necessarily open-ended questions either. Situation, problem, implication, need payoff. I highly recommend Spin Selling by Neil Rackham. It's one of my favorite sales books I've ever read. Situation, problem, implication, need payoff come up with these questions. And from there, you can actually have a real conversation. Talk to your customer about what's going on with them. Learn to listen and take that relationship to the next level to where you're actually working together, where they feel like they like you because you spent the time to listen rather than repeat the script over and over and over again. Um, I hope this helps. I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please take the time to reevaluate your scripts. Um, throw them out if need be. Start from scratch and just have a list of questions. That may be a great way to go about things. Um, so thank you very much for joining me. Please take the time, like, subscribe, review. They all help the channel out. And until next time, go fix yourself.